2019 comes complete with a brand new redesigned hole feature. So I'm going to select hole from the ribbon. And what we'll see is that it utilizes the new browser panel technology, which means that I could drag it and dock it within the browser. So beside the other browsers, so you can see I've got the model browser and the iLogic. So it's not really a browser more, it's a, it's a panel. It also will remember, you know, like you can see here that I've got the advanced settings collapsed. So it'll remember that that's collapsed and that the, that the panel is minimized. So it remembers these settings. So my favorite ones here, right off the very beginning is right at the top, is that you can enable and disable the preview. So if you're doing a lot of holes or maybe it's a, a more complex model and it takes a little bit to calculate the preview, you can turn them off. I also really like the new presets. So you can select from a you know saved, earlier saved preset and that loads in the content. So I named mine threaded through half inch. So you can see that it set a tapped hole, it's set to through all, and it set the size as well based on you know what I had what I had selected previously. Okay, so now I've got the, you know, I picked a preset or not pick a preset, but the next step is the placement options. This is somewhere where it's dramatically different. So what I can do now is I pick the starting face. So you can make multiple selections still restricted to a singular face, but the idea is that once you pick that face, you can start placing in as many holes as you need. So here's the first hole. I'm actually gonna select the outside edge and I'm gonna set this one to be one inch from the outside edge. I'm gonna set this to be one inch from the back edge. So notice how I was able to, to set that. I didn't have to create a sketch previously and I can continue selecting. So here's my, my next hole where I wanna place it. So I'd like to dimension it from that same back edge. And although it, it won't allow me to, to pick that dimension and link it like other dimensions, I can see that's D9. So I'm gonna come across this one. I'm gonna make that one D9 as well. So what I'd like to do then is, is dimension it to this outside edge. So we can see now as I hover over, over top of this one and I select it, I can see this is D8. So we'll go back here, we'll set this to D8, and I've now dynamically linked those ones together. So I'm going to pick a third hole, but this one I'm gonna do a little bit different. I'm gonna use the breadcrumbs. So with back within the hole panel, I'm gonna select sketch three, and notice how it flips me into the sketch environment, and now I can add things like constraints. So maybe I'd like to apply a horizontal constraint to line up those holes. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to add a construction line. So maybe I'd like to add a construction line snapping to that back edge and we'll snap this line. And what I'll do is I'll apply a perpendicular constraint. And I think I actually might have missed my coincident constraint. So we'll apply that coincident constraint as well. So now I've added that, that line, that construction line, I'm also going to constrain the hole to it. So just to show you that you can do different things, you can relate to existing parameters, you can pick edges, you can enter the sketch environment. So now I'm gonna go back to the hole, so I'm just using the breadcrumb, I'm gonna go back to the hole, and I'm gonna apply one more hole. I'm gonna pick the same face, but this time I'm gonna pick this curved edge. Notice how it snaps concentric automatically. So gone are the days where you had to pick between the four types, you know, whether you're using a sketch, you're going linear, doing concentric. It's just smart enough based on what you select to um, to interpret what location or what snapping you wanted to use. Okay, so I'm happy with the location of those holes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the plus sign because I wanna create additional holes. I don't wanna exit out, so I'm gonna click the plus sign and notice how it moves on to the next step. So this next one, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a little bit different. I'm just gonna do a drilled hole. I'm gonna have it be spot face. So notice how the panel dynamically updates to show me what I'm working with. So now what I can see is that it's still doing a through all hole. And I, I still use, similar to past releases, I still use the dialog box here, the panel here, to set the sizes on the picture. Now notice that this is a bit large. So maybe what I wanna do is on the screen here, I wanna set this. So I'm gonna set this to one. And we can see that the hole size updated. So whether I, I change it here or I change it on the screen, it's gonna it's going to allow me to, to change it in both places. 
Notice I've selected on the inside diameter. So this, this is actually kind of backwards right now. So I can either dynamically on the screen or within the panel, I can change the size of that as well. So maybe we'll make this an inch and a half and we'll start getting the, the hole the way it should be. The depth here I'm okay, it's just a spot face. And now what I can do is I can either click and drag and maybe move that to you know slightly better location or I can I can click on it and I can apply the dimension. So the idea now is that I could pick additional holes here, additional places for the holes. I'm gonna save this though as a preset. So when I go back up to the top here, we could see that you know star here showing me that it no longer matches. I'm gonna click the plus sign and now it's asking for a name. So we'll call this a spot face through and we'll say one inch. Click the check mark, and now notice that I have two spot faces or two presets available. Now the little gear icon gives you your option for working with your presets. So you can delete the current. How do you want them sorted? By the date they're created, you know, alphabetically. You know, which hole, new hole should it use? Should it use the last used, or should it use the current preset? So if I pick current preset, every time I went to click a hole or create a hole, it would default to this new spot face through one inch preset. So I've got that hole located where I want it to go. I'll click OK, and we can see it's added that hole. So working with the hole features is exactly the same as past releases. So I'm gonna find the hole, I'm gonna right click on it, I'm gonna say edit feature. And notice it brings up the same hole panel now. So really what I wanna do now is I wanna add an additional hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to click to add and I'm just gonna pick a new location. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to add a dimension so it knows where I wanna select it. We'll make it three inches to set that location. Perhaps I've decided to make it a little bit deeper of a, of a, of a taper or a spot face. Make it a little bit deeper and we'll click okay and the hole has been updated. So I, for one, the first couple times I used it was kind of like, wow, this is different. This is really hard to, to come to terms with. But the more I used it, you know, the third, fourth, thirtieth time, I love it. It's a great way, it's less mouse travel, it's less clicking, it's, it's less worrying about how are you placing the holes, it's just a matter of picking. Love how you can go in and out of the, of the sketches or into the sketch and back to the feature. Preset feature is phenomenal. It's overall a real win when you move to Inventor 2019.